go through, you know, some, some situations, but uh, get going and get after it. That's five seconds down violation to do Going on there and how do you guys correct, correct? Well, I just think, you know, the, you know, you show it so guys understand what, what we're looking to do and how we're looking to get open, but then also the, you know, the details of it, you know, bottom line, if they, they take the initial action away, you have to shoulder the catch, you know, walk a guy in, you know, extend a hand and go get it. Bottom line, it's, um, we have to get the ball in. Were you able to see what Kyle said the other day about guys uh, still trying to figure out their roles 40 to 50 games in the season? And, and if so, just kind of what, what is your take on that? Um, I didn't see it. Uh, I'll take your word for it. But, um, you know, I think it's it's one of those things I think they're still trying to figure each other out. I, I can't say that uh, they're unaware of their roles. Uh, we've had a lot of games where guys were, were playing maybe a little – a uh, little more than normal because of uh, absences, COVID, injuries, what have you. But, um, you know, I think it's it's one of those things they're still trying to figure each other out. Um, and I know we've played a lot of guys and it's been choppy. Um, it's not been easy for, you know, uh, guys to get a rhythm. And that, that might be part of it. But um, I think they're aware of how we want to play. And we've showed that at times. So I, I think they're aware. These last, you know, five games, um, if you look at that stretch as a whole, what do you think needs to change for you guys to have more success going forward? Well, it's frustrating. I mean, we looked at this eight-game homestand as an opportunity to kind of get ahead. Um, and obviously, we didn't we didn't do that. So, you know, losing tough games anywhere, especially at home, is is is, is difficult. Um, somehow, we got to make up ground. Bottom line, I, we know that uh, we have a tough stretch in front of us, and some really good opponents, some tough opponents playoff teams, uh, but we've got no other choice. So I, I think it's a great opportunity on the heels of struggling a bit. How do we bounce back? Uh, you're not going to guarantee wins, but can we play better? Can we compete harder? Uh, can we play together longer? Um, all those things I think are important to see. Is it, you said a lot, man, you guys know I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's probably the mindset of players. <laughs> uh, as coaches, I don't think we look at it that way. Um, I think we uh, kind of go through and understand strengths and weaknesses of our opponents. You know, what, what can we try and take away? What do we have to be mindful of? You know, how they're going to defend us. We don't look at it as, you know, we're underdogs or we can't compete. We think we can play with anybody. Uh, we've shown we can play with the uh, you know elite teams, and we've shown we can lose to bad teams. Uh, so... You know, that's why we have a subpar, sub-500 record. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, I have a tough time with that question. Um, it's probably more for uh, for players as far as do they look past the team maybe? Do they really understand how good, you know, some of these teams that we don't see often, how good they are? Um, I don't know. At this time of the year when, when teams are approaching the trade deadline, how do you guard against sort of when the business of basketball comes into a court of arms and there's uncertainty and guys can how do you guard against that effect in your playing? I mean, I think you have to address it. I mean, everyone's aware of it, that, and this happens every year. Um, so you, you have to address it and understand this. It's a real dynamic. I'm not going to gloss over it. it. It can affect a lot of people. Um, but we still have a job to do. You know, we have to stay present in the moment. Um, we have to stay connected as a group. And if there's a change that's, that's made, that, that's just life. It's business, and, it, you know, it's a tough part of this business but it can't affect, you know, what we're doing at this, at this moment. Uh, so just fighting that, that urge to look beyond, you know, worry about, you know, the deadline, I think is, uh, it's challenging, but, uh, you know, we have to show the maturity as a group and individually we have to kind of look past ourselves and, you know, stay in the moment. And review of the film from the second half, the additional on defense that really stuck out to you. Uh, I think the, you know, the attention to detail was not there. I think the urgency necessarily wasn't, wasn't always present. Um, you know, at, at times they, you know, I give their, their, the Clippers credit. They played harder. Uh, there is that air of desperation. We've been that team at times. So 
your back's up against the wall, you're down, you know, double digits or down, you know, more than that, it's, you know, it, you have no choice but to fight back, compete at a higher level. Um, we watched the, the, the whole second half. So it, it's, it's pretty, you know, uh, apparent what, what went wrong, how it went wrong. Um, and then, you know, there were some, some tough plays, you know, and obviously the final play, it is what it is, but, you know, it doesn't change the outcome. You, you get the two-minute report and you see some things and you're just like, okay, well, we, we put ourselves in that position. Uh, we gave that team life and allowed them an opportunity, but there were certain, you know, certain plays that didn't go in our favor that, uh, you know, are troubling. I want to make sure I heard correctly that watched the whole second half. I know you, of course, watched the whole thing. Yeah. Did the whole team watch the entire second half? Together? Yeah, we watched the whole whole second half together. Uh, when did that occur? Did that occur today? Oh yeah, this morning. Is that unusual to? to... Yeah, it's unusual. Um, you know that that's an unusual game. Um, you know you you clip it so it's you know you, you're not you're not going through all the free throws and this that and the other. And I, I kind of walked through the whole second half. You know what we as a group, what they um, collectively, individually, uh, some things that. I can do better, I, and I've always said that from day one. It's not just them; it's us, um, and we all have to be better. It was uh, what just sitting there and like watch the movie. There's dialogue. And yeah, I mean, I'm doing most of the talking, but yeah, there's there's some feedback. There's uh, some uh, some dialogue, and I, you know, I, th I think it's great. The more you can do that, the better. It's they take ownership of it. They. Uh, uh, you know, can talk out some things that maybe were unclear amongst themselves. I can help give them clarity. Uh, we can walk through situations so that, you know, we'll find that ourselves in these, under these same circumstances at times, and hopefully we can perform better. You guys are, um, as Sarah said, uh, last in the league in deflection. And, you know, it's not the perfect correlation between the best defenses and deflection. I'm wondering how you view that stat and the way you guys can perform. I mean, it, it's it's a stat. I think it's good. It's a good stat because um, at times you can you parallel it to you know, uh, especially in pick and rolls. You know, we do we have high active hands. Uh, we are not a deny team. We're not uh, you know looking to turn teams over. Uh, I think we we're looking to get deflections within the confines of how we guard. Um, but that goes back to those you know the hand activity. Uh, you know, the, the steals and, and taking ourselves out of position, I think, hurts us uh, as far as our paint defense, our rim, rim attempts. But uh, the overall hand activity, you know, collectively, I think can be better. You know, whether you're in your strength, shrinks, whether it's in pick and rolls, um, whether it's on our closeouts. You know, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it does matter. Um, I probably have to ask Rui that, but we're not running a ton of stuff when he's out there, you know, for that reason. Um, but uh, he's coming along. I think it's, 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 it's gotten much better. Um, I think it's still a work in progress, but I think the more reps he gets, the more time he's out there, he's got a better understanding of some of the uh, detailed things that, we, you know, we don't run a ton of. Uh, so some of that is, you know, off the board after timeouts, um, use our, those opportunities to kind of help, you know, bring him along. But in general, I think he's, he's picking it up. Um, no, not, not from a medical standpoint. I don't think that's, that's an issue. Um, we still have, you know, a lot of guys who can play. We talked about kind of narrowing the rotation a bit, but um, he's, he's not under any like limitation of that extent. No. So his 13 minutes was not working out. Just happened to work out that way. Yeah, it just yeah, it just kind of happened to work out. Um, I, I like the group that I had out there, um, and so we went away from him. But no, there was no there was no real reason beyond that. All right, coach. We'll transition over to Zoom. We'll start with Chris Miller. Sandro, thank you. Hey, Wes, you mentioned the two minute report clearly stated Brad tried to foul uh, Kennard. I know this is, might be a hindsight question, but maybe moving forward, should players identify to the refs before the play starts that they intend to file a player before it happens? 
I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, that's that's not on Brad. You know, I think, you know, we, we actually tried to foul Justice Winslow <laughs> um, as he was bringing the ball up. And Brad clearly tries to foul him. Um, I don't know if it was demonstrative enough to to be noticed, um, but that was the intent. Um, uh, obviously, the two-minute report is what it is. It's a tough play. Uh, it's just unfortunate. But, you know, I don't know if, if that helps, um, but I don't think it hurts. You know, I think at times, too, just – you know, uh, those, there have been situations where, you know, you're, you're trying to get the ball in and uh, whether it's on the baseline, uh, it's happened in games this year. And I talked to the official. I said, look at me because I have a timeout and I'm going to use it. Um, and at times it, it's happened before where I'm yelling for timeout. They're not looking and you got to run up there and try and get one. They don't necessarily like you doing it, but you do what you got to do. All right, we'll go over to Neil. Hey, Coach, you discussed, you know, it's something that you have to address with the trade deadline approaching. Do you feel like it's been successfully addressed or could it still potentially be lingering in causing harm to the roster? I'm sorry, say the first part again. You mentioned earlier that, you know, it is something that you have to address about the looming trade deadline coming up. And I'm just wondering if you can elaborate. Do you feel it has been successfully addressed or if it's still lingering? I think those conversations are ongoing. Um, everyone's aware it's part of the business and it's, it's an unfortunate part that it happens kind of, you know, it could happen the day of a game. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things. We've all been part of teams where um, you're on the road. It's, it's a, it's a home game. It's, it's an off day. Um, the schedule doesn't care. Um, at, the, uh, at, the, at the same time, we have a, a job to do here and we have to stay present in that. We have to be, you know, that, that has got to be the priority. Um, I get it. It's real. It's, it's uncomfortable. You're hearing chatter. You see your name in hoops hype or whatever, you know, platform. Um, it can be a distraction. You just have to kind of rise above it, put it aside, um, and do, do our job. We'll go over to Christos. Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how could you describe the mood and the atmosphere in the, in the team ahead of the next game? And how important is it to bring the intensity from practice to the game, to, uh, to your next game? Uh, I'll answer that second part. It's very important. You know, I think that's why we as a staff want to be, you know, as competitive today as possible. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, mentally it's refreshing. You guys want to get back out there, maybe shake off, you know, that, that feeling. It's an awful feeling, um, but you can't run from it. That's why we watch the film. You have to kind of go, you got to go through the fire. You know, we have to own that. So, yeah, we went through it. Hopefully we cleaned it up. Now we can turn the page and kind of get ready for Memphis. Uh, you have an opportunity to have two good practices um, and hopefully get them a little bit more carryover. Thank you very much, Coach. And we'll finish up with Wayne. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I guess with you being from the area, you have a unique perspective on how you know passionate fans are around um, the team. What's a message you give to the fans just to lift their morale? Uh, you know what? I think it's uh, it's one of those things where um, we make mistakes. You know, no, none of us are, are perfect. And, and we've been struggling, you know, and I think the uh, most important part uh, from, from us is um, we got to find a way to bounce back. It's not, not for the lack of effort. We're going to keep trying. We're going to find the right mix, uh, find, find the right energy. We know that the, this fan base is very passionate, you know, uh, about us as a group. And they want us to see us succeed, you know, but, you know, the lack of energy, lack of intensity um, can't happen. You know, I think that's an important piece. Uh, it's our job to come ready to play, perform, uh, win or lose. We have to compete. And lastly, coach, um, with the game coming up in Memphis, what do you hope to, I guess, establish in that game that you didn't see in the Clippers game? Well, I mean, the first half was terrific. So uh, obviously we can play a half like we did the other night. Great. Um, even within that half, there were, there were spurts that were a little concerning um, where the Clippers missed shots. Um, we got bailed out by making some shots. But uh, overall, just a level of consistency. Let's sustain our play. I've talked about this quite a few times. Not, uh, it, it'd be great to have 48 minutes. Probably unlikely. Let's have it, you know, as close to 48 as possible. Let's not play for a half. Let's not play for three quarters. Um, that's controllable. 